Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and our co-host, Anel, isn't here again this week. He hasn't been here for the last, I guess, month. He won't be here again next week, and then we'll be back together in a couple of weeks. But we're still doing our live call-in show in Manhattan. We're actually live every other week there. We present this show every other week. And it's on every Wednesday at 11 p.m. on Time Warner Channel 56, or it's it's the Lifestyle Channel on um, the M and N Network, uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network. So so you can catch us there. Um, okay, this is episode number 92. Why even a little free will is impossible. Okay, and think about this as like most people get very clearly, very quickly, very easily that, um, well, now let me back up. Basically, I want to like start off with why I'm doing this show and then I want to define free will so we kind of like get an idea. I mean, this may be a new audience and then I'll go into this. Okay. I'm doing this show because like our world, our leaders, our scientists, our institutions, religion, personally, everyone, we're all completely deluded, you know, completely mistaken, deluded about who we are as, as a species, as a humanity, as people, as individuals, you know, who we are as human beings uh, in terms of like what we do and think and feel and say. And basically the, the, the illusion of free will says th that whatever we think, feel, say, do, decide, choose, is up to us fundamentally in a way that, um, that and nothing that is not in our control is actually making us do what we do or think or whatever, that, you know, what we do is up to us, you know. Um, and another kind of like a um, way of saying this is like, because we have a free will, we're ultimately morally responsible for what we do. In other words, like, if, if somebody, like, let's say, took a person, if, if a group, group of people, let's say, overpowered a person, made the person, took a person's hand, and made the person, let's say, um, throw something, a rock or something, um, at a building, whatever, at, at a window, um, morally, you know, we understand, we would understand that because like the person was overpowered, the person really couldn't but have done that, you know, wasn't really in his control. We would say that he wouldn't be morally responsible for that, you know. It was just things that he absolutely couldn't control were making him do that. But with the free will illusion, you know, and this is the case where like, there's no people forcing him per se, you know, the person just throws the rock at the window. Ordinarily, according to our legal system, our religion, whatever, our personal morality, we will blame, fundamentally blame that person for what they did, and that's the free will illusion, you know, in terms of morality, when the reality is that, all right, there may not have been people, you know, a bunch of people overpowering the person, putting the rock in the person's hand and just like, you know, making him do all the motions, but the, the, the person's unconscious, this process of causality that I explain a lot in, on previous shows, just the whole nature. Basically, there are other factors, or genetics, heredity, you know, all, all this stuff um, is equally compelling. It's like, you know, it, it takes the, um, the form of the people who are overpowering the person. So basically what I'm trying to say is like, the person doesn't have a free will anyhow. The person's not doing that. We don't do anything on our own. We, we have to do everything we do because that's the, the nature of reality. So, um, okay, and again, this is really important because like if our whole world, our whole society, our whole, you know, I mean, our legal system is, is like, it's actually like there was a case. It's the law of the land in the United States that people have free will. So if our entire civilization is founded on a huge fundamental illusion about who we are as human beings, you can understand how maybe our world isn't as, as 
good as it could be, as, as intelligent, it, how it doesn't work as well as it might. Um, so the purpose of this show is kind of like to try to get us straight on this so we can like improve our, our world, improve our personal lives, not blame people, not, um, not feel guilty. It's, again, we're not going to do away with morality. We're not going to let people or ourselves get away with doing things that are wrong. Um, but we would address what we do and think and feel and all in a much more intelligent and sane way. You know, that's the thing, because like the, the illusion of free will is completely insane. It's actually a delusion. Um, and so, yeah, so that's what this show is about. Okay, so again, all right, the, 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 the topic of this show is why even a little free will is impossible. Because like what happens is, yeah, most people get that, um, that a lot of what we do isn't up to us. For example, let's say we're um, thinking a sentence. You know, look, what I'm saying right now, first I'm saying it in English, okay? So I learned English. If I was in another country, I wouldn't be saying this in English. Um, I went to a relatively decent school, and, you know, my vocabulary is relatively good. So again, that was something else I wasn't in, in control of. Um, most people in school learn that our human behavior is a result of both nature and nurture, that whatever we do is a, a product of our genes, which like comprise about 50% of our, gen our um, personality, and our environment, um, which is like how our parents brought us up, how what we were taught in school, what kinds of friends we had, and what they said to us, and how, you know, the stuff we learned in life, st stuff <laughs> we learn in life on, on a daily basis, because we keep, you know, learning our past, our past experiences. So mo most people get this. Most people get that because of nature and nurture, um, you know, because of causality, whatever, that, that we don't really have a complete free will, okay? They, 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 they accept that. I mean, like, advertisers know that. Advertisers know that, like, if you put a commercial on TV hundreds of times, the more times you put that, you know, commercial on and viewers see it, the more likely that the viewers are going to buy the product or whatever, do whatever the commercial wants you to do. You know, it's this basic psychological conditioning. It's one of the principles, major fundamental principles in psychology. So again, people get that, all right, because of all this stuff, we don't have a f complete free will, but they'll still say, and incidentally, I'm really tired. I explained this because, <laughs> like, I explained this in the last show. I, I got maybe two and a half hours sleep last night, so <laughs> I'm on real low energy. Um, so they, they'll, they'll, they'll say, you know, people will say, you know, because of these factors, fine, we don't have a complete free will, but, but we do have some degree of free will, okay? So like this show, I'm going to explain how, no, we, we don't have any, 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 any free will at all. And I've explained this in other shows, actually, I've done other shows about this, but like, and the reason I'm repeating this is because like, well just what we talked about with commercials. This is a very new topic to many people. They haven't thought about it before. So you, you see this once, you may not get it. You see this twice, you may not get it. You know, it might take three, four episodes of the same theme until you really, really get it. So, so the, the repetition is not only good, it's, it seems necessary because, like, you know, again, people aren't really getting this all this easily. And I, the last show I did actually went into that. Um, all right, there's two kinds of ways how, how we could possibly have, you know, or that people say we have a little free will, because, we, you know, again, we can't have any free will. But the one way is that people say, well, not all of our decisions are up to us, but some of them are, okay? And then the, the second way, actually, maybe there's three. The th second way is that... Um, that a part of every decision that, you know, part of what we decide, think, say, feel, do is up to how our parents brought us and our genes and all, all this, you know, nature, nurture, but part of it is still us, up to us, okay? And then I guess the third alternative would be that some of our choices are partly up to us and partly up to stuff we can control. All right, so we'll, we'll deal with each of these in turn. Um, 
some of our choices are up to us, people say. Um, well, you know, like, you, I mean, I, I, should, I should, like, ask people more. I, I, I go into Man uh, Manhattan. I was there last Sunday with a, a sign that says, uh, free debate, do we human beings have a free will? Einstein and I say we don't prove us wrong, okay? And I sit on a bench. And last Sunday was pretty cool. I had maybe about 15, 16 people came up to, to me. We talked over like maybe five hours or so. And this, this is good because it gives me a, a, it's a good way for me to kind of like understand where people are on this and how to explain it better, you know, for the show or in general. But um, so, yeah, that's, you know, invariably last Sunday that a lot of people were saying that, you know, what they choose is, you know, um, or some of their choices are up to them. And, and again, I, I, should, I should ask people to be more um, clear on this, to give examples. Um, so let's say, because I, I, the question then becomes, all right, well, if some of, of our choices are up to us, which ones? You know, um, it's interesting. In Judaism, traditional Judaism, not so much maybe Reformed Judaism, but in fundamental Orthodox Judaism, the standard teaching is that um, everything is in God's hands because God is supposed to be omnipotent. Uh, accept moral decisions. In other words, in Judaism, what you choose to eat for lunch, uh, whether you choose to go to a movie for to a park in the afternoon, you know, all these kinds of like decisions that aren't quote unquote moral decisions. What what kind of job you have, who you marry, where you live, all the stuff that isn't necessarily a moral decision, it's not up to you at all. It's up to God. Okay, this is standard Judaism. But they say that moral decisions are, are up to us. So, um, so let's, let's, let's work with moral decisions. Uh, you make a moral decision. Let, let's say you have two people. Okay, one person is, is raised um, in, by gypsies, raised by gypsies in like, I don't know so much about gypsies, but I hear that they kind of like steal a lot, whatever, it's part of their culture. They, for whatever reason, um, believe it's ethical to steal. I don't know. So anyway, so you got a kid. You got a, um, one kid is raised by gypsies, and he's taught to steal. Okay, he says stealing is right, you know. Okay, then you have another person, you know, raised in, um, in a regular society where, you know, Thou shall not steal is one of like the Ten Commandments, and you're taught that, and you you know you don't steal. You know that's what they're taught. So like you know as adults, um, when when the the first person steals and the second person doesn't, you can clearly see that it's it's because of their upbringing that the first person is actually thinking they're that they're doing something right by stealing. You know that's the thing. They're um, there's a part of us, it's called like the moral imperative. The Greeks understood this, that like at the time we're doing whatever we're doing, whatever choice we're making, whatever, we do what we feel is right. We can, and this could be like, you know, we could be doing the most horrible thing, whatever. Um, we, we rationalize it. We, you know, we say, well, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's justice. It's, you know, it's fairness. It, you know. It's necessary, the, the lesser of two evils, whatever. We'll justify it or rationalize it in some way, but that, we're hardwired for this. So, so again, this, this first kid, you know, steals, thinks he's doing the right thing. Second kid doesn't. And so, like, that's a, that's a perfect example. You can apply this to, to any kind of a choice. You know, so if, if you're going to say that part of your choice, or that some of your choices are freely willed, um, you have to remember that whatever choice you make is going to be the result of what you learned in the past and your genetics. You know, no, none of your, our choices can't escape that. Um, the more fundamental reason, there's two, I'm going to do a show on this after this, that, that um, some of our choices can't be freely willed is that every choice, everything has a cause. You know, causality, basic causality. Um, if everything has a cause, that means every human choice has a cause. And then there's a cause to that cause, a cause to that cause. These causes go back in time. It creates a chain of cause and effect that 
that it regresses back moment by moment to before we're born, and you can't have some choices escape that causality. Okay, I'm not going to go with the unconscious again. I'm going to do a show on this um, after this. But um, so, all right. I think I think you can understand why um, <clears throat> you know from the example with morality and causality, why no, some of our choices cannot be freely willed. You know, causality applies to everything. It applies to human beings, it applies to rocks, it applies to animals, it applies to every particle. And some people say, well, some people say, well, it wouldn't apply to our thoughts because our, our thoughts aren't physical. They're spiritual, mental, whatever. They're, you know, they I have substance, but <clears throat> that doesn't work because what happens is when you have a thought, make a choice or something, you're making it at a precise moment in time, okay? And as, as Einstein explained, um, our reality, you know, ordinarily we kind of think of, of space and time as different entities, just kind of like mass and energy are different entities. But as Einstein explained, um, it's actually more accu accurate to say space-time. In other words, like time, space can't exist without time and time can't exist without space so basically what, you, what I'm trying to say is like when you make any kind of decision you call it spiritual you say it's not material if it occupies a specific moment in time it's part of that unit of the universe during that moment it's part of the timeline it's part of causality a way to understand that is like the state of the universe at the moment you make any decision is the result, the complete result, of the state of the universe at the preceding moment. Okay? And this is the most fundamental general way to describe causality. Then the state of the universe at that moment is the complete result of the state of the universe before that. So again, like, you can see how a spiritual thought, if, it's, if we're in the universe, we, we can't escape. The universe is everything. Spiritual thoughts have to be in the universe and have to just go along <coughs> with the state-by-state -state evolution. Okay? So, all right, so we, we, we see how, like, some of our choices can't be um, freely willed. Now let's go into, like, understanding why um, part of our choice of what we choose can't be freely willed. I, I've got a good example on this. If I'm, like, this is, let's say this is my, my, my right hand represents my conscious mind, okay? My left hand is going to represent my unconscious mind. So, like... My right hand is completely um, holding up this paper, okay? It's the cause of this paper being up. You know, if, if the right hand had a will, it, it might want to say, you know, I'm freely willing, you know, myself to hold up these papers, okay? Now, all of a sudden, this is my conscious mind, okay, my will. Well, all of a sudden, I'm holding it up now with, um, with both hands, and my left hand is my unconscious, okay? So now... My conscious mind, which represents my will, can no longer say that, that it alone is holding up the paper freely, you know, because, again, the, the unconscious is holding up with it. Now, the thing about the unconscious is that it, it's with us all the time. It doesn't sleep, and the unconscious, well, I'll get into this in the next show, but it really actually decides for us. Now, in other words, like, what I'm saying is, like, if the unconscious is going to be taking part in every decision we make, at least part, and actually, the, the the more the the more accurate truth that it's actually making the decision, and then making our conscious mind aware. But what happens is, like, if the unconscious isn't a part of holding up this paper, then you know, in this case, <laughs> it would fall, whatever, right? Or or you couldn't, um, yeah, because because it, it'd be needed. Um, all right, that's uh, I basically yeah. So what happens is because we have an unconscious where all our data is. Anytime we make a choice, a decision, we think a thought, again, our, our, our concepts, the, 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 the building blocks of whatever we're thinking, whether it's language, memories, um, feelings, you know, all this stuff, concepts, they're not in our conscious mind because, you know, consciously we can only store one thing at a time or, you know, be aware of one or at most a, a few things at a time. So all this stuff, our language and all, is in our unconscious. 
And so in order to make a decision, think about this, you've got to draw on that information. Like right now I'm deciding to say these sentences. Um, the words that I'm using aren't in my conscious mind, so they're in my unconscious mind. So obviously the unconscious is at least, at the very least, and again, most accurately, it's, taking, it's making the whole decision, as I'll explain in the next show, but at the very least, it's taking part in the decision, because that's where all the data is, and that is why um, just, you know, part of our choice can't be freely willed. Again, the unconscious never sleeps. As a matter of fact, the unconscious is like, you know, eight hours during the day, we're, you know, if, if we get sleep, I got two and a half hours sleep last night, eight, eight hours a day for most of us, you know, we're asleep, we're not even conscious, like our, so our unconscious is actually, you know, more a part of us, you know, on an hourly basis than is our conscious. All right, um, so yeah, the, where this is important, you know, why, because people like want to have a little free will, you know, they, they, people, are uncomfortable with the idea that we're robots or puppets and I kind of like try to um I kind of try to like make it easier for people to accept by by saying that well you know you don't have to think of us as robots or puppets you, um, if you believe in God and I believe in God I equate God with the universe you know to me God is everything is if God is omnipresent then God is everywhere and the universe is everywhere is God if God is omnipotent then God is all powerful and the laws of nature are all powerful. So like, you know, basically it's, they're kind of synonymous. So like, you know, basically if you don't want to see yourself as a robot or a puppet, you can see yourself as a manifestation of God's will, a manifestation of the universal will. In other words, we're doing, you know, if God is omnipotent, if, if God is all-powerful, what God says goes. So in other words, what you're saying, what you're thinking, what you're feeling is what, what God is compelling you to think, feel, and whatever. So another way of saying that is we're a part of God. We're manifesting God's will. You know, that, that I think um, is much more acceptable to people than, than to consider ourselves as, as robots or automatons, you know, whatever. Um, so, what else? All right, we've got about five minutes left. So, yeah, morality is where this question is important. And um, the, the reason this is good to understand that free will is impossible because happen, what happens with morality is that, um, all right, we, everybody knows we're imperfect. We make mistakes all the time. There's nobody who thinks they're perfect, who, who thinks they've never done anything wrong, all right? So we do stuff all wrong all the time, and other people do also, okay? And that's actually why we value forgiveness because we know this. We forgive ourselves and forgive others. But the thing with forgiveness is like when we or other people do something wrong, it's kind of like a good thing to forgive. We don't have to forgive. You know, we're being moral to forgive out of, out of the kindness of our heart. But when you understand that whatever we do wrong or whatever other people do wrong, they had to. We had to do it wrong. We had no choice. It wasn't up to us. Then there's, there's really nothing to forgive because it's not us, you know, you, you might blame the universe, you might blame God, but we, we become fundamentally um, innocent, okay? So in other words, understanding that free will is impossible gives us a rational, logical reason to not blame ourselves or others. You know, we still, again, kind of pragmatically hold each other responsible in a sense because we've got to... You know, because what we do has have consequences. In other words, like if if some kid goes around stealing, you know, we've got to like create laws or rules to prevent that, whatever. And and for ourselves, we can't allow ourselves to say to ourselves, well, you know, I don't have a free will, so I can do whatever I want. Because again, things have consequences. If, if you don't treat people well, people are going to respond in kind and whatever. Okay. Um, so now the one thing I want to want address now is like with this thing about like having a little free will you know people say you know you know we don't have complete free will we have a little free will you got to understand free will is 
an either or kind of thing. It's kind of like a light can be either on or off. You know, sometimes the light can be dimmed, but you know, if it's dimmed, it's on. You know, if it's off, it's completely off. A door can either be open or closed. It could be a little open, but in the case of it's a little open, it's open. So again, the, the idea that we have a little free will because not everything is black and white, you know, it just doesn't apply to this. Maybe in some other things, like, you know, you can't be a little bit, pre bit pregnant, you know, you're either pregnant or you're not. Um, okay. So, because that's important, you know, that's another way of understanding, you know, the nature of free will. Um, all right, I've got two minutes. Um, back to the morality. I'm trying to think of, like, what to say. And I, you know... Um, all right, so we can't, we can't always be moral and say it to the extent that, that we understand the free will is an illusion. So, all right, we, um, with ourselves, we say to ourselves, all right, I did something wrong, and so, like, I'm going to vow, I'm going to hope, I'm going to try to not do it wrong again for my good and for the good of others. But I can do that. I can do that really well without also having to punish myself. You know what I'm saying? Because like in, in psychology, there's like conditioning. There's like carrots and sticks. You can get people to do the right thing by rewarding people for doing the right thing or by punishing people for doing the wrong thing. And in this case, like when you do something wrong, the reward is like you've got a conscience and you're exercising it. You, you, you acknowledge you did wrong. You feel good about acknowledging it. It's not up to you. Again, nothing's up to us. But, but you know, we kind of like... That's how we regulate ourselves in terms of morality. Um, we reward, you know, basically what I'm trying to say is we don't have to suffer guilt anymore. We can just, like, be conscient. We can use our conscience, be moral people, good people, you know, without having to endure the, the, the pain of guilt. All right, we've got about 20 seconds. Like, again, catch our, our Manhattan show every Wednesday night, 11 p.m., um, Manhattan Neighborhood Network, MNN, Channel 56, Time Werner, and you can catch us on the web also. Check out the website, Exploring Illusion of Free Will, CausalConsciousness.com, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks.